Hello everyone, welcome to IPv6 for CCNAs. That's right, in this series of videos recorded exclusively for our friends at the Cisco Learning Network, we are going to discover exactly what we need to know for success in Cisco's CCNA certification. We've gotten a lot of requests for IPv6 information. What exactly do I need to know? And what is this IPv6 all about in order for me to achieve my CCNA? And most importantly, in order for me to succeed in network implementations today. So let's go ahead and have some fun taking a look at the IPv6 protocol and everything that goes along with it that we might need to master for our CCNA certification. First thing, and this should be review for you, right? We need to know that the IPv4 address is 32 bits in length. Now, when you look at this mathematically, you realize that this is going to give you the ability to accommodate like billions of addresses, but we know that that's not enough, and we'll elaborate on why in a moment. In IPv6, the address space goes from that 32 bits to 128 bits. Now, mathematically, when you expand the length of the address like that, that allows for a mind-bogglingly large number of addresses. Notice 3.4 times 10 raised to the 38th power number of addresses. That's out of control, huge. That's like millions and millions of addresses for every square inch of the surface of the planet Earth. As a matter of fact, you'll see lots of great illustrations in the literature talking about just how many addresses for our machines there will be in an IPv6 world. Now, if you focus in on the addressing here, we recall that the 32-bit IP version 4 address that is something that we represent in our dotted decimal notation, as you're familiar with. When we look at IPv6, on the other hand, in order to easily represent all these 128 bits, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize a hexadecimal notation. Notice there are eight sections of the address, each separated by a colon. And those eight sections of the address have our hexadecimal characters inside. Each of the characters in the address represents four bits. So if you look at one of these sections, you've got four characters times four bits, that's 16 bits, times eight sections, and that works out to your 128 bits. Now, as a CCNA, you're going to need to know about tricks that we can do with the representation of these addresses to make them more convenient. And we're going to cover that in the next video. But for right now, all I need you to do is realize that we've got 32 bits in our IPv4 address. And to accommodate the many more addresses that we're going to need in the IPv6 environment, we're going to have an address space that is 128 bits in length, and it'll be represented in hexadecimal. That's it, folks. That's all I need you to master from a certification perspective from this particular video. Now, you might say, Anthony, that's a lawful lot of addresses. Isn't that just like complete and total overkill? Well, please keep in mind that we need so many addresses because we need to address so many more devices these days. I mean, we've got mobile phones, PDAs, industrial and home appliances that want an IP address. Your dog wants an IP address. Your cat wants an IP address. It's amazing, isn't it? As a matter of fact, a recent study by Cisco said that Traffic from the internet will increase when it comes to mobile devices 6,000%. That's right, a 6,000% increase over the next couple of years in internet traffic due to all of this proliferation of mobile devices. 
Think of how many addresses we're going to need as a result of this proliferation of these mobile gadgets that are all going to need at least one of these addresses. More and more, we have devices connecting to the public internet that are what we call always on. Yeah, always on connections thanks to technologies of broadband like cable, wireless, DSL, all that great stuff. And finally, we need this larger address space because a lot of the applications that we have today for the IPv4 internetworking, they don't work all that well with network address translation. Network address translation has the one benefit of hiding internal addresses, so we get a little bit of a security benefit from it, but it has a lot of nasty qualities that go with it. As a matter of fact, this whole paradigm of the internet, it was always supposed to be really this end-to-end -end defined communications channel where there is a unique endpoint address on each of the communicators and that's like public and known. Network address translation breaks that paradigm. Okay? I mean, really, the internet as initially designed would be you're coming in from a unique address that identifies you, you're communicating with me, I have a globally unique address, and that was how the communications were drafted up. So network address translation, the band-aid that we have for address shortages, that's something we don't always like. And again, some applications, NAT will flat out break. But here's the deal, everyone. IPv6 and why we get so excited about it, it's not just the larger address space. And that's really the point I wanted to end this first video in the series with. You see, sure, the larger address space is going to be amazing, and it's going to allow, like, uh, just the renumbering of networks very efficiently, and it's going to allow us to have all of these new gadgets with addresses, but the larger address space is only part of the equation. We're going to love the enhancements that we get with mobility. We're going to love the enhancements we get in IPv6 with security. There's something called IPsec. IPsec stands for IP security. In IP version 4 networks, in our current networks, IPsec is an optional add-on to your IP. In IP version 6, this wonderful IPsec is mandatory. Every single node, by law, has to support the IPsec security technologies. So we're going to have lots of great enhancements as a result of the new IPv6 protocol. Something else that I want you to be aware of here, as we can see, is there's a beautiful simplification in IPv6 compared to how things work in an IPv4 world. They got to take a look at some of the headaches that we get with IP version 4, and they were able to engineer in great enhancements. For instance, I'll talk about just one here, broadcasts. We know that broadcasts can be pretty icky in an IPv4 world. They're not the greatest and most efficient things for our IPv4 communications. Well, thanks to IPv6, broadcasts go away. That's right, folks. Think the dodo bird. The broadcast is extinct. And by the way, I'm not being callous to the dodos. Very, very sad thing that happened there. But just think about broadcast traffic being completely gone. That's right, extinct in our IPv6 networks. Now, you might say, Anthony, how in the world did that happen? What replaces that important broadcast technology? Well, in IPv6, we'll see that we're going to use multicasts instead of broadcasts. If you're itching to learn more about multicast, in our CCNP study group here, you'll see a thread that I'm doing on multicast videos. That's going well beyond your CCNA, but some of you out there may be interested in that. So, lots of great new enhancements in how this particular protocol is going to work. And guess what, folks? You don't have to rip and replace in order to achieve this technology. 
you're not gonna go in and rip out all your IPv4 and then replace with v6. We're not gonna have to turn off the internet so that we can move to IPv6. As we'll talk about later on in these videos, there's remarkably robust transition mechanisms for us that are going to enable us to real seamlessly have IPv4 running, then we can run IPv6 over the top of that, have both protocols running, and then we can slowly begin to remove the IPv4 stack and its communications. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this first video in a series of videos that I'm going to do for the CLN on none other than IPv6 for CCNA students. I hope to see you very soon in the upcoming video that we'll record here on CLN. And let's see, next up, we want to talk about that address more. I showed you an IPv6 address today, and in the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at that address in more detail, and specifically, we'll see the cool ways in which you can take that big, long hexadecimal address and represent it more succinctly. Thanks again for joining me, everyone.